For so far, my review of social cost of carbon estimates. What remains for today are some comments on the relative merits of carbon taxes vis-à-vis -vis cap and trade, followed by some observations about the public acceptability of carbon taxes. Theoretically, Pigouvian tax and cap and trade are equivalent in the simplest models that abstract from uncertainty. We will inspect the influence of uncertainty in a bit, but first let us consider some argue, other arguments. It has been argued that the administrative cost of creating a market for allowances is higher than monitoring tax compliance. The tax has the disadvantage that the amount of emission reductions remains uncertain. By contrast, the certainty in emission reductions with cap and trade comes at the cost of price fluctuations on the allowance market. These price fluctuations are argued to be bad for investors. Well, to their merits, they are counter-cyclical. Note that these fluctuations can be softened by incorporating either price ceilings or floors for emission allowances. Now, Weizmann's theorem. Weizmann showed that the equivalence between cap and trade and taxation no longer holds when regulators do not have full information on abatement cost of reducing emissions or full insight in the avoided damages. With uncertainty, the relative performance of taxes or prices and caps or quantities depends on the curvature of the cost and benefits curves of abatement. Let us try to make some sense of this by decomposing the figure taken from Toll. Let us draw some assumed marginal cost curve for emission reductions with emissions on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. Here the idea is that reducing emissions to zero becomes increasingly expensive. It makes some sense that the marginal benefits of emission abatement increase with emissions. Or put differently, we can expect the marginal damages of emissions to increase with emissions. It is not necessary that these lines are linear. Weizmann expressed his theorem more general. However, for the sake of reproducing Toll's figure, let's say that they are linear. Based on this information, the regulator can either choose the optimal price for carbon in the form of a carbon tax at P1, those emissions that cost less to reduce than the tax will not be emitted until the point Q1 is reached. The regulator could also have opted for the other instrument of capping the allowable emissions at Q1. In this case, if the assumed marginal abasement cost were correct, a market price of P1 would emerge. However, now imagine that due to some breakthrough technology that the true marginal abatement costs turn out to be lower. In this case, the welfare loss due to either overregulation or underregulation differs by the policy in instrument. Would the regulator have known the true marginal abatement cost? The choices of optimal tax or cap would give a price or quantity of P and Q star, respectively. Yet the tax has already been set at P1 or the cap at Q1. Consider again the earlier set cap of Q1, which allows for more emissions than the new optimal Q star. In this case of underregulation, firms will trade under the cap until the market price P2 emerges and only cut emissions until the now inefficient cap Q1. The welfare loss of underregulation equals this red triangle, that is, at Q1, the marginal damages of emissions still outweigh the marginal cost of abatement. So reducing emissions further until Q star would have been welfare enhancing. Similarly, if we would consider the tax set on the old information again, we would see that the tax was set at a higher price than optimal, and as a result encouraged emission reductions beyond the point that these reductions still outweigh the marginal damages. Again, the policy set on outdated information leads to a welfare loss, but this time of having committed to a policy that was too stringent for economic activity in retrospect. So here we are back at the figure by Toll. 
and the welfare loss of either over or under regulation appear to be more or less the same. However, the expected welfare losses of over or under regulation start to look different when we change the slope of the marginal benefits relative to the slope of the marginal cost. And you can see that the relative attractiveness of either taxation or cap and trade start to depend on how we expect the curvature of the abatement and damage functions to look and what type of error may be more frequent. One argument as expressed by Toll on page 56, climate change is driven by the stock of emissions that implies that the marginal impacts of climate change do not change much if emissions are reduced or increased by a little. The regulator should therefore levy a carbon tax rather than create a market for emission permits. Put differently, Weizmann theorem gives arguments for using a carbon tax, but also to establish a cap and trade market for methane emissions that have much shorter atmospheric lifetimes and therefore weaker stock properties. Moreover, methane is a greenhouse gas that is some 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Note that for long-lived pollutants like carbon dioxide, the carbon price should be set equal to the discounted cumulative marginal damages over time.